observation, which is an interesting one. Um, and while I was uh, posted here, I asked myself in, in, sur in, some, um, in some events, why are all Israel supporters? Where, I mean, why don't I hear them? Why I hear only these people who are criticizing Israel? And <clears throat> the more social media <clears throat> has become a, a tool which more people are using, the more you see a Israel, supporter, Israel supporters a, taking action on social media. But having said that, yes, there is a... There is a tendency to be apathetic. There is a tendency to not to be involved in the in the in the in the debate. Something which don't benefit us. But, but it's I, I agree with your observation. Yes. chose to speak about, I chose my words usually, and therefore I, I decided to choose criticizing Israel. Okay, well, I, I'll, I'll go to my other question. Then. I, I can see up here about, you're saying a lot about, you know, getting um, young people more engaged and, and more involved, and I can see talking about every country would want her own young people to be more involved in politics, we want them to have both, we want them to, be, to care about our economics and education and security and so on. But you also talk about a lot reaching new audiences. First, it's not a big issue, but public well, diplomacy. But, back, pub but public diplomacy, it's as you hear, it's public diplomacy, which means I'm someone who deals with public diplomacy, and this trend of public diplomacy, it's not a trend that only Israel is using. Also, the United States. When you see the United States activity in different places in the world the public diplomacy of the, of, the, of the United States, you see that they want to reach different audiences and to bring their own perception about different things. And I don't see it as something negative. I also believe that young audiences are very intelligent. I believe that young audiences don't believe in propaganda. And um, I also don't believe in propaganda. So therefore, when I was talking about being relevant to young audiences, I, want to, I wanted to bring my message to the young audiences. Why France is opening a, a, a institutions of teaching French in different places in the world. Why a, the Goethe Institute is spreading all over the world. Why? Because every country a, wants to bring its culture, wants to bring a, 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 its message, if you want. But its culture, it's even better. Better term uh, to different audiences, and this is exactly what we what we want to do as any other country, especially especially if these audiences perceive Israel only through the media, which is covering only the conflict. So therefore, I can say, okay, I it's not important for me. Let the people hear whatever they want to hear about Israel through the media channels, but I'm. I choose a different approach. I say I want to bring, I want people to know more about Israel. And since I know that I have a good product, and I want them to hear about the product, so that's why we're doing it. Um, yes, sir, right there. Thank you. I'm Ben Spalding. I'm a freshman at the Media Culture Communications Program, and we've talked um, about the government and new media, and we've talked a bit about other bloggers and users in the media. We talked a bit about the relationship between the two. Do you want to talk about it? Well, you could start. <laughs> if we as a government, we refer to bloggers or to other leaders in new media exactly as we refer to journalists. Because at the end of the day, for me, 
a, as someone who, who deals with the media, for me, a person who can reach other people, someone who can leverage my message, this is someone I, uh, which I, I, I would approach. And therefore, I, and I'm not talking only about today, I'm talking also about years in the past. For me, bloggers are not less important uh, than, than journalists, first. And sometimes, bloggers are even more important because a blogger which is interested in a certain topic, if you're relevant for him, he will use your information as a source. Something which a journalist sometimes won't, won't accept to do. So therefore, talking about, um, talking about bloggers, talking, talking, talking about people who have a lot of followers on Twitter, or a lot of friends of, on, on Facebook, for me, they are the same, like journalists. I would like to respond to this and, and, uh, <coughs> because I wonder if David is speaking I, mean, I guess he's speaking really for himself and not for Israel here because in, only in this case no, yeah, in this case, case, no, yes, no, no because, I speak because, about, I speak because about before the Israel, Israel refuses to give press cards to bloggers and this is an ongoing debate in Israel uh, between the press office and the uh, and the bloggers community, I think, I'm not very sure that there was a petition to the court even on that and Israel, the government is yet to name one blogger which received a press card from Israel as opposed to thousands of journalists. So I carry a press card, but that's because of my work as a journalist and uh, as a blogger I don't enjoy the same rights. And uh, covering events in the West Bank, it can lead to situations which are not only difficult professionally, but sometimes even plain dangerous. And the second point is a more general one. And it's something that, how should I put it, about the spirit of social media. You know, I got this rule on Facebook, I only confirm real people as friends. You know, all of, all of a sudden you get a pub asking to be your friend. <laughs> or you get some shop or something. So I, I try to confirm real people. And... What about liking brands' pages as opposed to confirming them? Th that's a bit different, but, but I hate it when, when, when a pub becomes a, a you know, get my this friend. profile <laughs> and you ask me. So I don't want my government as my, my friend as well. <laughs> I don't know, like, it sounds that, for me, again, I, I respect the work David does as a professional, and, and, and I even, when I was in Ma'ariv, we even did a story about a project he did here, which was a cover story in a magazine. So, it certainly gets the attention, and, and it certainly, you know, opened new, new channels, which professionally, I have the uh, respect for them. But, I gotta admit that on a personal level, I prefer following real people and I think the internet is going there. I think that once, even on your Twitter feed, you know, if you get too many, too many organizations, because Twitter has a lot of organizations, if you get too many of them, you start, you know, being, you know, concerned about it. So I don't want my government as my friend. I just want to add one sentence, I agree with you. I don't like to follow pubs or governments uh, as well because at the end of the day, it's like following CNN or Fox. If I want to know what's the message of CNN or Fox, I'll go, I open the television and I see what CNN or Fox are reporting and I won't follow them on Twitter. That's exactly why we encourage diplomats to open their own accounts so they can bring their own message. And when the message is coming from a person, and not from a government, from the institution, so then the message is more reliable, it's something that you can 